I'm Jamie Kell, an application engineer at Go Engineer, and this is an introduction to mates in SOLIDWORKS. I'll take you through what mates are, the basic and advanced types of mates, several ways to access them, an advanced feature called mate references, and some best practices for using mates. Mates are constraints to hold parts together in assemblies. They are geometric conditions, like relations and sketches. Each mate requires you to select two or more faces, edges, or vertices on separate parts to build a constraint holding those parts together. You can get to the mate dialog by clicking the mate button in the assembly tab of the command manager. This paperclip is the standard SOLIDWORKS symbol for mate, and we'll see it anytime we access a mate tool. There are seven different types of standard mates. Coincident, Parallel, Perpendicular, Tangent, Concentric, Lock simply fixes two components together so they always move together. Distance and Angle. Almost all of these are 3D versions of the same geometric constraints used in sketch relations. An important thing to pay attention to is the mate alignment. Most mate conditions, like coincident, result in two possible ways to orient the parts. The orientation closest to the part's current placement will be chosen by default. You can flip the mate alignment by clicking these buttons. You'll notice that when each mate is formed, this box pops up with options. From here, you can change the mate type, enter a distance or angle, flip the mate alignment, or undo or finish the mate. Below the basic mates are the advanced mates. These are more complex mate conditions that often do the job of multiple basic mates, but are more specific. The profile center mate aligns two parts along their geometric centers, but is limited to parts with simple, convex shapes. The symmetric mate makes two entities symmetric across a plane or face, just like a 3D version of the symmetric sketch relation. The width mate is extremely useful. It requires you to select four faces, two each on two separate parts. It centers the parts based on those faces. Centering a part between another part's faces is a very common scenario in assemblies and building intelligence into that condition allows the model to keep the parts centered even if dimensions of parts change. The width mate also has a drop down with a couple other options. Dimension and percent allow you to specify a distance or percentage of distance off center. Useful for when you want the intelligence of the width mate but parts aren't necessarily centered. Free treats the outermost faces as boundaries for the innermost faces, or vice versa, allowing you to add real-world limits to your assembly's motion. The path mate constrains a vertex of one part to an edge of another. It's another way to show motion and limits in an assembly. The linear-linear coupler mate couples the linear motion of two components. You can make the parts move together in a linear direction, or at a ratio. Limit mates allow you to set minimum and maximum distances, or angles, two parts can have from each other. Once more, this is great for representing real-world motion limits in a SOLIDWORKS assembly. Mechanical mates allow you to add mechanical relations that go beyond simple geometric conditions, like a complex cam follower, or a peg moving in a slot. There are also options for a hinge, gears, rack and pinion, screw, and universal joint. All of your mates in an assembly are stored in the mates folder in the design tree. You can delete suppress, or edit them just like features in a part. This is very useful if you find out after the fact that you have the mate alignment wrong, 
or used a coincident mate when it should have been parallel. So far, we've accessed the mate tools by going to the assembly tab in the command manager and clicking mate, but there are several faster ways to get there. First, you can pre-select faces, edges, or vertices before clicking mate. Try holding the control key and selecting two planar faces on separate components and then clicking the mate button. Your selections will already be in the blue box and SOLIDWORKS will try to pick the most applicable mate type. For instance, if I select two cylindrical faces, it will automatically pick concentric for me. If you select four faces, it will automatically pick width, since this is the only mate type that uses four faces. You can take this a step further by noticing the box that pops up next to your cursor when you let go of control after selecting the second part. It has buttons for all the applicable mate types and will let you create a mate without even going through the mate dialog. Personally, I prefer to see the mate dialog so I can check the available options, but for pure speed, it's hard to beat this. My personal favorite way to access the mate tools is to click the first face, edge, or vertex and then immediately stop moving the mouse. A context menu pops up with options, but it fades if you move your mouse away. You can reactivate it by clicking on the part again. One of the options on this menu is Mate, the paperclip symbol again, which takes you right into the Mate dialog without even having to move your cursor outside the graphics area. Then you can select the other face or faces without having to hold control. This same menu pops up if you right-click on a component, but there's also a long list of options that moves the Mate button farther away from your cursor. If you want to go even faster, you can use the shortcut key or mouse gestures. I won't go into how to use those here, since we have other videos on those in GoEngineer's knowledge base, but you can easily configure either one to activate mates in a snap. Another neat shortcut is called Smart Mates. If you hold down the Alt key and click and drag a face or edge of a part, SOLIDWORKS will automatically try to figure out the best way it can mate the part to whatever it touches. If you select the connecting edge between a cylinder and planar face on a part like this shaft, SOLIDWORKS will attempt to form a peg-in-hole mate, which is both a concentric mate for the cylinder and a coincident mate on the planar face. This can only be done with smart mates or mate references. If you find yourself mating a part the same way every time, such as a bolt or a shaft, you'll find mate references extremely helpful. This tool allows you to create a mate built into your part so that when you insert it into an assembly, all it needs are the faces to mate to and it's ready to go. You can create a mate reference by going to Reference Geometry on the Features tab in the Command Manager. You can select up to three references on the part that SOLIDWORKS will try to form mates from when the part is inserted into an assembly. You can specify the type of mate for each reference, or leave it as default and let SOLIDWORKS choose. SOLIDWORKS will try to solve the mates in the order shown, that is, the primary reference entity has first priority, and if it fails to find an applicable mate, SOLIDWORKS will move on to the secondary, then the tertiary. After a mate reference is created, when you insert the part into an assembly, you can drag the cursor around and watch the part snap to applicable faces and edges. A little icon describing the type of mate is shown in the corner. In this case, you can see concentric, coincident, and peg in hole. This can save a lot of time when inserting many copies of the same component. There's one more mate shortcut to be aware of, multiple mates. Symbolized by this lightning bolt over the mate paperclip, multiple mates lets you create multiple instances of the same mate type to different components at one time. In this example, all of these parts need to be concentric. Instead of mating this component concentric to this one, this component concentric to this one, and so on, I can click the lightning bolt, select one component to base all the mates on, then select each of the other components. Each mate is created separately and can be edited on its own. Let's conclude with some best practices about mates. First, whenever possible, use faces in mates rather than edges. Although at first glance the result may look the same, using edges may leave degrees of freedom unconstrained that using faces would have locked down. You can also mate to reference geometry, such as a plane or origin. This is especially useful for setting a part's orientation. 
Each component carries its own origin and front, top, and right planes with it, and mating them parallel to the assembly's planes is a good way to prevent the part from rotating while leaving it free to translate. But how can you select planes if they're hidden? The mate dialog covers up the design tree on the left-hand side of the screen. Not to worry. Clicking this plus sign next to the assembly name in the graphics area will drop down the design tree so you can find and select your planes. Try to use the most general mates that describe the assembly. In this case, I'm adding a mate to constrain the rotation of this arm. I'll mate this face to the side of the base here with a coincident mate. That works fine initially because these faces happen to be planar. But if later down the road I were to change the size of this part, that coincident relation is going to break. It would be better to use a parallel mate in this case. That accomplishes the same intent of preventing the rotation without depending on another factor, the dimension. This coincident parallel confusion is a very common cause of mate errors. Using a more general mate will prevent a lot of these errors. I hope this video has answered a lot of questions about how to use mates. Once again, I'm Jamie Kalb with Go Engineer, and this has been an introduction to mates in SolidWorks. Mm -hmm.